الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا للإسلام ومن علينا ببعثة محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام صوري أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهادة من قال ربي الله ثم استقام وأشهد أن محمد نبيه وحبيبه ورسوله سيد الأنام اللهم صل على رسولك محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه البررة الكرام وسلم تسليما كثيرا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربنا وابعث فيهم رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياتك ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة يزكيهم إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما أنا لكم مثل الوالد لولده صدق رسول الله Respected brothers and sisters in Islam Today we are exactly according to some calculation on the 12th of Rabiul Awal which coincides of course with the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today 7th of October and 12th of Rabiul Awal this is not a celebration but remembering commemorating the legacy of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sunnah and his exemplary behavior and legacy for us. The remembrance of the Prophet's birthday is motivated by nothing but our obligation that I feel an obligation to love the Prophet Muhammadullah wa Muhammad Rasulillah two loves to obey him to remember him to follow his example not to imitate him but to follow him in spirit and to be proud of his ummah as Allah Azza wa Jal is proud of him the ayah which I have recited comes from Baqarah 129 it is in the language of Quran but by the tongue of Prophet Ibrahim السلام, long before he made a special appeal to Allah Rabbana O oh my Lord Allah فيهم رسولا, send among them from themselves a messenger in whom yetlu alayhimu, alayhim, so that he will recite ayatike your signs, your verses, your indications, your power, your knowledge. When you alimhum al also he will teach the book, the Quran. Well, hikmata also apply the teaching of the Quran by his own wisdom. And when you zeki him, and also purify his community, cleanse his community, in a sense transform his community inneke entel azizul hakim indeed O oh Allah you are az you are almighty and all wise why do we remember and commemorate the birthday of the Prophet it is not again for the purpose of celebration or entertainment at all take it away from our mind on the contrary it is to show our loyalty and commitment to his teachings. To be a good Muslim, to renew our faithfulness to his sunnah, to rejuvenate our heart and spirit by demonstrating our dedication to him and to the Quran. The love of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in Islam, as all we know, there are many hadiths, is the spiritual nourishment i'm not saying a requirement but food of the heart and solace for the eye enlightenment for the spirit and for the heart 
So it's a cure, in a, in a, in a sense, for our headaches and aches. So to remember him is at the same time to remember the unity of all the prophets before him, from Adam to, you know, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To re appreciate his universal teachings in the modern time. The unity of all humanity from Adam to, and to Eve. The equality of humanity in the sight of Allah. To remember that we have all have come down from one single soul, male and female. Hence, we are brothers and sisters in blood and as all having been connected with our common ancestor. Who was the prophet? The messenger. A family man. A team leader. A manager. An administrator. A judge. A teacher. A counselor. A statesman. A leader. And all, in all these capacities and missions, he acted with determination, in the light of revelation. Whenever he has some problems, he has consultation, shura, as Quran says, mutual consultation. And he believed when he was teaching, communicating, the equity, justice. And he believed that justice in the universe, regardless of who he or she was or what was the background of the person whom he or he was dealing with so he also ensured when he was teaching the freedom of expression but he was tough stern against who zalimun oppressors he did not compromise wrongdoers and but he was very soft-hearted and tender-hearted towards poor needy destitute and muslim and oppressed he executed every task with full sincerity, with full responsibility, and also knowing that he is accountability in the sight of Allah. Because he is like us, human being, but he was a perfect human being. He used to utter words which are full of wisdom and meaning. Then when we look at his role in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal, the, in the same line of the ayah which I have quoted in Surah to Ali Imran 164. لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْهِكْمَةَ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ Such a powerful ayah. Indeed, Allah has favored. Has, Allah has blessed the believers by sending among them a messenger whose function was to teach and to recite the signs and verses of Allah, remind the power of Allah to them, and also purify them from their wrongdoings, from their selfishness, from immorality, and also teach them the Quran, apply them the Quran with his wisdom and sunnah. Yet, these people before, if they recall, were in a manifest error and in astray. So, brothers and sisters, this ayah clearly outlines at least four important duties of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of them can be summed up as a teacher. I'm going to talk about today, inshallah, briefly on his method of teaching the Prophet. To teach the Quran, his community. To transform them from ignorance to what I may call enlightenment, like illumination, nur, or civil, civil society in a sense, civilization. But I'm using this carefully, this expression. To, to remind them of Allah's favors, to show them and demonstrate them the meaning and understanding and application of all ethical, legal rules of Islam as given to him by the, in the Quran by Allah Almighty. So brothers and sisters, let us reflect together. Over 23 years of his lifespan, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu as unanimously agreed by all the historians, Muslim and non-Muslim, emphasized, you know, as emphasized by the historians, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam aimed to transform the life of numerous, even endless individuals from what we call jahiliyyah, 
this is a very general term, state of ignorance, to the state of enlightenment, nunallara, nur, civilization, to peace, tranquility, to Islam, and let them to develop the best community among humanity, as Quran says. So he helps his people to embody a higher standard of morality, so much so that he stood for justice at any cost and advocating for equity of all. Soon after the founding and establishing the mass, Masjid, Masjid Nabi, as you know, wasalam, has immediately engaged in developing educational policies, educational policies and strategies to educate his community. Therefore, he allocated a certain spot in the mosque of Nabi Muhammad wasalam, what we call Sufa bench, the people of the bench, where he educated numerous Sahaba and sent them out to communicate the message of Islam abroad. So educational policies started right with the establishment of the masjid by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So brothers and sisters, what kind of method he applied when he was teaching his community? Let me tell you first. We all, or all of us, first and foremost, you know, either a daughter, either a son, or father, grandfather, grandmother, uncle, whatever. This is human relation. But we are also a teacher within our limited capacity. We are all of us a teacher, whether we like it or not. So we have a responsibility to behave as a teacher. So therefore, I would like to reflect together with you on the method of teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that we can take some inspiration and apply for us when we are educating ourselves, our family, and our children. One day, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to the masjid and he noticed two group of people, halaka, one of them engaged in reading the Quran and making istighfar and supplicating dua. The other group, is busy in learning with learning busy learning like ilm, study of study Alayhi look at both groups and he made this remark Kullun ala khayr. all of them are doing good all of them are on the right path Innama indeed i was sent as a teacher somehow by saying that he gave the priority to teaching. So therefore, in Islam, the study of knowledge is ibadah, is an ibadah. So if you ask me, instead of, don't make me wrong, my, by comparing this, in, instead of making, for example, sometimes, you know, reflecting maybe it's a good, engaging some nawafil prayer, do sometimes spend time in learning, in studying. That is, Rasulullah said, I am a teacher. And there is the Quran, there is a term, as you know, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The term Rabb, the first ayah from opening chapter of the Quran. Muhammad Sallallahu was what I may call him Murabbi in Arabic. The one who gives tarbiyah. And it's the name of Allah, Rabb. Sustainer, cherisher, trainer, educator. So even from that, so in Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, made every prophet that he sent a, an educator to his community, a trainer, a teacher. So when Muhammad Sallallahu was teaching to his community, Ashab, the hadith that I quoted in the beginning of the khutbah, he said, إِنَّمَا أَنَا لَكُمْ مِثْلُ الْوَالِدِ لِبَلَدِهِ I am to you as the father to his child. I am to you as the father to his child. Which means he exercised when he was teaching compassion, passion, love, dedication, devotion, determination, caring. And he used no hardship whatsoever and put them at ease because he knew there are levels of understanding among his community. Speak to the people according to their level of understanding, as we learn also from, from the prophetic tradition. 
So apply the soft method of uh, teaching, giving importance to the most important things. If he wants to teach something very important, he used to repeat three times, not one, three times. So teaching and instilling little by little, letting them digest what he is teaching, was the policy of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَبْعَثْهِنِي مُعَنِّتًا وَلَا مُتَعَنِّتًا This is a two term in Arabic. They carefully chosen by Rasulullah Sallallahu مُعَنِّتًا وَلَا مُتَعَنِّتًا وَلَكِنْ بَعَثَنِي مُعَلِّمًا مُيَسِّرًا Truly Allah did not send me to be arrogant, to be harsh, to be stubborn. Rather, he sent me to teach in such a way that people feel comfortable with me, like making easy for them, restaurant, facilitator, so a teacher who facilitates the teaching. So he will consider individual differences in their learners. He was very considerate of the individual differences, and he used to address them, each one, you know, by their beautiful name. And according to their level of understanding, he was teaching them. Sometimes he used illustrations to, um, to convince his community. Not necessarily a dry type of lecturing, but giving like sometimes drawing, just to illustrate what he was aiming at in his talk. Muhammad Sallallahu once saw something unpleasant taking place in the masjid. I don't want to call what is happening. And he noticed, and some of the companions were reacting to this unpleasant situation with some harshness. They were about to beat the person who made this unpleasant thing. Alayhisalam, he said, "Innama bu'istum." He doesn't say "ana bu'istu." Innama bu'istum muyassirina, walam tubaathu muassirina. Hey, be careful. You all have been sent as facilitators, making things easy, facil, not complicating or, you know, dispelling people, driving people from, their, from your circle. Brothers and sisters, why Allah Azza wa Jal already gave him a warning in Surah Ali Imran, as we all know. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ غَلِي وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّنْ غَلِيزَ الْغَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكِ فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْ هُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَنْتَ فَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ It is part of the mercy of Allah that you behave, you should behave to them with mercy. With mercy, with love, with compassion, with affection your companion, whoever they are. Otherwise, you will see them leaving your circle, leaving you, abandoning you, deserting you. And then, if they make a mistake, if they even misbehave, forgive them. Forgive them. But not only forgive them, them, I also ask for Allah's forgiveness for them, forgive them. And, and whenever you feel that you need their opinion, make a consultation with them. Once you have decided, leave the rest to Allah. Allah SWT will take care of the rest. Allah loves those who put their trust in Him. This is from Surah Al Imran. My brothers and sisters, the perfect character of Prophet Muhammad, as we said, is and should be our aim. Sometimes we may misunderstand when I say ittiba al rasul following the rasul not taqlid not copy imitation you should understand the spirit of the message of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that you will be able to analyze it and relate it to your to our time otherwise Everything will be like a dry, not lively. So when we say, you know, he is a universal messenger, he is a mercy for all humanity, we mean it, not by the tongue. And we live with it. Therefore, today's lesson for my brothers and sisters, 
that as Muslims living in this modern time, in very critical time, facing many challenges as Muslims individually, collectively, we should go back to his teachings. At least this night should be a golden opportunity for us to reflect together closely, respectfully on his legacy and try to understand and relate his message to our life today. No imitation, as I said, we only love him and therefore we obey him as Allah Azza wa Jal asks us to obey him. Değerli kardeşlerim, bu gece Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem Efendimizin dünyaya teşrif ettiği 12. Rebiul evveldir. Alemle rahmet olarak gönderilen Efendimiz bizlere, ailemize, gençlerimize, çocuklarımıza hatta bütün insanlığa bir rehber ve muallim olarak gönderilmiştir. O bir rahmet elçisi şüphesiz. Diğer elçiler ve nebiler gibi insanlığı karanlıktan aydınlığa, cehaletten medeniyete götürmüştür. Kendisine indirilen vahyi insanlığı yaşayarak aktarmıştır. Onun öğrettiklerine uymak ve itaat etmek bir Müslüman için hayati önem arz eder. Mevlid inşallah bugün başlıyor. Bir kutlama, bir eğlence değil, aksine onu anlamak, onun öğrettiklerini ve ahlakını üzerinde yeniden düşünmektir. Tefekkür etmektir. Onun ruhuna göre hareket etmektir. Peygamber Efendimiz sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem Kur'an-ı Kerim bir nebi ve aynı zamanda bir öğretmen, bir muallim hoca olarak anlatmıştır Kur'an-ı Kerim bize. Kaldı ki bütün peygamberler kendi çaplarında bir öğretmendir. Allah'ın ayetlerini okumak ve okutmak, Kur'an'ı ve kitabı öğretmek, kitabı hikmetiyle anlamak, anlatmak ve yaşamak, nasıl tatbik edileceğini bizzat göstermek, toplumu reform etmek, ıslah etmek, teski etmek, hem bireysel anlamda hem toplumsal anlamda rehberlik ederek onların ahlaklarını güzelleştirmek Peygamber Efendimiz'in asli görevlerindendi. Hz. Peygamber Efendimiz'in öğretmin, öğretim metotlarına baktığımız zaman şu özellikler var. İkna edici, kolaylaştırıcı, sevdirici, farkları gözeten, öğrenen kimseye hürmet eden ve önemli gördüklerini tekrarlayan, her zaman yumuşak dil kullanan, kendi ifasıyla adeta öğrencisine bir baba gibi davranan, sahabesinin hepsini bu şekilde eğitmeye çalışan mükemmel bir insan. Rabbim onun sünnetine uygun yaşamaya ve onun geride bıraktığı mirası hakkıyla anlamaya, manevi mirası gençlerimize, yeni nesillere ve insanlığa doğru ve güzel bir şekilde anlatmaya, tanıtmaya, aktarmaya nasip eylesin. Kandiliniz mübarek olsun, geceniz bereketli olsun. İnşallah we will have a program tonight right after Maulid prayer. Our uh, distinguished imams will recite the Quran and Neşid and there will be also a talk both in English and in Turkish. Turkish. İnşallah bu akşam, akşam namazını mütakip bizim özel programımız olacak. Bu geceyle ilgili hem hocalarımızın Kur'an tilaveti ve aynı zamanda ilahiler ve sohbetimiz olacak her iki dilde de. İnşallah bekleriz. Tekrar gününüz mübarek olsun. May Allah grant you peace and happiness and grant you all a good, healthy, wealthy life and goodness in this world and in the hereafter. Amin. Ben Rabbil Alemin. Elhamdülillah. Elhamdülillah. Elhamdülhamden kamil ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulullah Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. İnna Allahu melaiketehu sallallahu aleyhi ve nebiyya eyledina amanu sallu aleyhi ve sellimu teslima. Allahumma salli ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala ali Muhammed. Kema sallayta ala ve ala ala İbrahim inneke hamidun mecid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammedin ve ala ali Muhammed. Kema barikta ala ve ala ala İbrahim inneke hamidun mecid. Allahumma tahir kulubana ve stur uyubana ve şu merdana ve kudu duyunana ve beyyid vücuhana ve rfa derecatana ve rham abaana ve afir ummahatina ve aslih dinana ve dünyana. Allahumma Allahumma ensur min men nesara din. Allahumma ensur cemil muslimin. في كل المكان والزمان اللهم انصر من نصرة وقت من حدل المسلمين اللهم استجب دعانا يا مجيب الدعوات بالسلامة والصحة والسلامة والعافية والعلينا وعلى المسلمين والعالمين والحمد لله العالمين
ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اقيم الصلاه